The 2023 NFL Draft is a fascinating example of how difficult it is for a team to get their draft right. And the first two picks were a direct reflection of that statement. With the first pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Bryce Young. No! 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 One team, the Carolina Panthers traded away significant draft capital to move up to take Bryce Young, number one overall. The Houston Texans, also QB needy, simply waited at the second pick and took C.J. Stroud. With the second pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select C.J. Stroud. The Panthers would finish the next season 2-15, and, and the GM who drafted Young was fired. The Texans made the playoffs and more likely have their franchise QB for years to come. Is the NFL Draft really a crapshoot? How important is scouting and player evaluation? Why do GMs do what they do? Why are you like this? And in the end, is it just luck? All those questions aside, let's answer the big one. Why NFL teams completely f up their drafts is coming up right after this. Thanks Bear for sponsoring. They have a lot of great spring sales running out, but Bear Mattress gave me a higher discount than offered on site for my viewers. Head to bearmattress.com forward slash five points and use code five points to get 40% off your Bear Mattress. Spring is great, isn't it? Flowers, somewhat decent weather, and time to clean. With that cleaning, you need to get toxins and allergens out of your life. And that's where Bear Mattress comes in. Bear is a premium GOTS and Green Guard Gold certified mattress designed to upgrade your sleep, improve your lifestyle and overall quality of life, and it's conveniently shipped to your door for free. That means Bear Mattress is free of any polyurethane based foams and harsh unnecessary chemicals and pollutants. What you do first is take the Bear Sleep Quiz. My results, I'm a side sleeper, so they put me in a Bear Original King Size Foam Mattress, and it was so easy to set up. I've had it for seven months now, and I love sleeping on it. I wake up refreshed and ready to crush the day. With Bear's sleep recovery technology, salient powered fabric helps me stay cool throughout the night. Yeah, and I let the dog up here. As I mentioned before, all of Bear's mattresses are Green Guard Gold certified and Certipure US certified, so you can sleep safely and soundly knowing there would be no harmful off gassing. And hey, they even let you try it for 120 nights, so you can make sure you love it. I love my Bear Mattress, and I think you would too. If you're looking to upgrade your sleep, head to bearmattress.com forward slash five points and use code five points to get 40% off your Bear Mattress for a limited time. They have a lot of spring sales running now, but my code is higher than what is being offered on site. So check it out while you can. The NFL's first draft was actually in 1936. No, not in 1980, which was the first televised NFL draft. In both cases, there have been monumental busts since, both on chalkboards and right in our living rooms. Yes, we all know about the Ryan Leafs, the Jamarcus Russells, the Johnny Footballs, but what about the DeAndre Bakers? Sometimes where the real busts hurt a team don't always happen in the top three or even in the top 10 picks. Where am I going with this? Look, there have been many attempts to quantify the draft over the years. ESPN ranked every team since 2012 on a draft score called CAVO, Career Approximate Value Over Expected, essentially assigning a number to a player's performance relative to their draft slot. What they found out was the Seahawks, Chiefs, and Ravens were the best drafting teams from 2012 to 2022 in all rounds. And to nobody's surprise, the Jets were the worst. I'm not going to pick through the data or specific busts like Zach Wilson and Christian Hackenberg, but the important point here is that all draft ranking sites are going to look at every pick that was made, not just the first round, meaning you better be good at drafting every time you take a spin in the draft crap game, not just in the first round. Guess which teams were the best at drafting from rounds four through seven only? The Packers, Patriots, and Ravens. Also, successful teams. I'm also not trying to minimize the value of high draft picks either. Clearly, the higher the pick you have, the more likely they will be both a starter and a valuable asset to your team. The empirical data from multiple sources shows this time and time again. I found an article by Warren Ludford, and he states that despite all the resources available to scouts and talent evaluators now, the NFL bust rate is off the charts. His data shows this. 16.7% of draft picks didn't even play for the team that drafted them. Small caveat, in some cases, 
these players were traded. 37% were considered useless and 15.3% were considered poor. So of the 224 players drafted every year, 69% of them are considered poor to substandard. Not nice. That's 154 worthless players out of 224. Of the remaining picks, only 10.5% are average, 12.3% good, 6.9% great, and 1% legendary, meaning each year, each draft will only produce two or three Hall of Famers. Which isn't shocking because if we didn't have high standards for greatness, then everyone would just get a trophy. The point is, there's a reason why 224 fucking players are drafted every year. A lot of them suck. Well, by the NFL standard. So what's producing all these misses and why are teams better than others at drafting and why does your team always fuck up their draft? Browns fan? Well, the answer to that first question is simple math. Not everyone can be great. And also injuries, scheme fit, lack of work ethic, legal troubles, inability to adjust to the speed of the game, poor footwork, sorry, I could go on. But the second part of that question, why some teams are better than others, well, the answer is a little more complicated. Just looking at the top five drafting teams, according to ESPN, the top three, Seahawks, Chiefs, and Ravens, seem to have a mold of good organizations that don't have meddling owners. In fact, you could argue that the top 10 teams are generally good organizations when it comes to owner interference, except two outliers, the Cowboys at four and the Commanders at 10. And yes, those are outliers. When you look at the bottom teams, don't be surprised. Seeing the Jets and the Browns down there is about as surprising as a submarine having an Xbox controller for a helm imploding. Still, the 49ers came in at 30, which again leads to much subjectivity in these rankings as on-field success doesn't always directly correlate to draft success. So with all this variability, we can only draw one iffy conclusion. Meddling owners cause serious problems when it comes to draft day. How many times have you politely suggested to a boss that what they want you to do is a bad idea only for them to force you to do it and find out it was a bad idea and then you get blamed for it? Let's circle back to the beginning of this video and Bryce Young. The Panthers traded DJ Moore and a slew of picks to move up eight slots to take Bryce Young at the behest of David Tepper. GM Scott Fitterer insisted that they take CJ Stroud. It's still early on Young, but he led the Panthers to a 2-15 season, and Stroud was an absolute monster. Fittingly, fitter-er was fire-erred after only three years on the job. Even worse, the Panthers gave up their 2024 first-round pick, essentially handing the Bears Caleb Williams. It's these kind of moves that set back franchises for years, decades, hell, their entire history. Now, lost in that blunder is probably the biggest reason why success is so limited in the NFL draft. Scott Fitterer was only on the job for three years. Most NFL GMs get an average of three to four years on the job. As Michael McKelvey so eloquently put in his video on the draft, most GMs operate on a self-serving short-term basis as their moves are generally designed to win now as any long-term effects of their transactions are statistically unlikely to ever bite them personally in the ass, meaning it's highly unlikely that their five-year plan even makes it to year four. But that's not to say there is an axiomatic correlation of success for long-standing GMs either. Mike Brown has been the Bengals' GM since 1991 and doesn't have a ring. Jerry Jones hasn't done shit since the 90s and he's been there since 1989. Tom Telesco of the Chargers, Jason Light of the Buccaneers, and Chris Ballard of the Colts have all been mediocre to good in their eight plus years. However, Brett Veach of the Chiefs has only seven seasons under his belt and three rings already. Again, it's a crapshoot. And that leads me to the final point, one I kind of made earlier, is that despite all of the best practices, despite knowing all the things we do, despite all the data, all the measurables, all the scouting, the interviews, and the dramatic phone calls, the NFL draft is still harder than ever to get right. Because at the end of the day, numbers and data mean nothing. There has to be winners and losers.